Madden Football is the home of Super Bowl 56. And this historic matchup is brought to you by EA Sports. It's the Rams and the Bengals, and it's coming up next. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Tonight, it's all on the line. We play for the Lombardi Trophy, as it'll be the AFC champion Cincinnati Bengals taking on the NFC champions, the Los Angeles Rams. Brandon Gordon joined by my good friend Charles Davis. And Charles, it was maybe the most unlikely Super Bowl run we've seen in a long time. What a story. The Bengals had not won a playoff game since January of 1991. 4-11-1 last year, 2-14 the season before that. Bottom line, though, here they are, the AFC champs. And Brandon, this is one of the more remarkable turnarounds in NFL history in recent years. In fact, most of the guys on this team weren't even born the last time they won a playoff game. Although, not that long ago, they had a stretch where they were in the playoffs seemingly every year but couldn't win a playoff game. Now they've gotten that done, they're back in the Super Bowl. And remember, two Super Bowl appearances in their history, number 16 and 23. Unfortunately, both times they ran into Joe Montana and the San Francisco 49ers. Meanwhile, the L.A. Rams, they are back in the Super Bowl for the second time in four years. Remember, they lost Super Bowl 53 to the Patriots in Atlanta, 13-3. But here they are trying to be the second team in two years after Tampa Bay last year to win the Super Bowl in their home stadium. And we go back to that Super Bowl loss to the Patriots. And remember, they were an offensive juggernaut at that time, but only put up three points in that game. And they have been a little bit of a tough team to pin down over the last few years. They've had their shares of ups and downs, especially on the offensive side of the ball. But they've always had that great defense, and they're looking to ride that crew to a Super Bowl crown. On first and 10, Joe Burrow. Open man is Uzama. Yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. And Charles, despite this list of key inactives that we see here, they've obviously still been pretty successful. Give everyone credit for this one, because to me, when that happens, key guys are out, the next man steps up and plays well, but that starts with the organization itself, all the way through. No excuses for guys being out, finding guys who are capable backups who can step up and play when they need them, and we've seen the results of that. This team knows how to work through things. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Back to Mixon on second down. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. They give those two yards right back, and now they're looking at a third and ten. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line, but I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game, so what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage, if he breaks through, it's nothing but room to run. On third down, Burrow. And unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. So on fourth down, on comes the left-footed punter, Kevin Huber, to punt it away. Back deep, Brandon Powell. This is taken at the 18. Nice punt, but good work on the return to get back 11 yards. And the Rams will go on offense here for the first and 10. So now we'll get a look at the other offensive unit as they come out for their first possession. They'll be led out by their quarterback in his 13th NFL season now. It's Matthew Stafford. And apparently all Matt Stafford needed was a ticket to L.A. to get his postseason career on track. Never won a playoff game in his decade plus in Detroit. But he cleared that hurdle a few weeks back. And now he has the Rams in position to play for the ultimate prize and in their home stadium. He takes this from the 30 to the 34. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Stafford going to give this to Akers. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play. So now third down coming up.
to throw is Stafford. He'll get this complete to Cooper Cup. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. And CD, we have seen some great runs the last few times we've been together, but I think we can at least put this one in our top five. That was a determined gallop there. And as a former defender, I can tell you with certainty, those are the ones that have you losing sleep at night. I would not like to be in that film room on Tuesday going over that one. Just a pretty poor effort defensively, and it leads to a big play. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 43. On the handoff, it's Akers. He gets it forward for four, maybe five, but the flags fly. And this one could be coming back. So that time they get the tight end on the hold. Normally he's a pretty good run blocker, but this time he just didn't get his arms extended and let go quickly enough. The flag came out as a result. On the give, this is Akers. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. Andrew Whitworth, the dean of NFL tackles, called for the penalty that time. Now a run with Akers. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Here's Stafford. Going up top for Cup. He's got a man complete. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A big play that time through the air. 38 yards. Well, after the standard two-week layoff, you always wonder, how's your offense going to respond and come out and play here in the Super Bowl? Well, they got a great answer right there and almost a sigh of relief on that side of the field because now they've got to feel like they can use their entire playbook and game plan for this one. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. So that'll back him up five. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. Stafford now to throw. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Out of the gun, Stafford. Looking for the end zone. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by Jesse Bates. And the Bengals are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. Well, they were going for the big strike right there, but this just terrific coverage by the defense in the end zone. And what helps being a safety in this spot is the back line of the end zone. Defensive back coaches always preach that's an extra defender because you know that they can only run so far. They can't run past you out of the back of the end zone. Then you know you can't be beat over the top and gives you a chance to go make a play. Burrow going to lead up the Bengals here first and 10 at the 20. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. This is caught. It's Boyd. And he's brought down after a very nice gain. A big connection on that one. 30 yards. We're scoreless after one.